Hello everyone, I'm Phil, and this is the third video in our assembly language programming series. Uh, today we're going to improve our Hello World program that we had before. So we have our Hello World program, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy it. So we're going to copy our Hello World, and we're going to create a phasm1.asm. So now we have a copy of our program. Let's open it up, and this is our familiar Hello World program. If you remember, last time we had to tell the computer how many characters were in our string. And so what we're going to do in this video is create our first um, function outside of main. And uh, it's going to calculate the length of a string. So to create a function, it's just like we did up here. We have a string of characters and a colon. So we're going to do the same kind of thing. We'll create, create something called string length. And what we'll do is the first thing that we have to do in our functions is save um, the registers. Um, I'm not going to save all the ones that you technically should. I'm just going to save the registers that I am going to be playing around with. So we'll push, push certain registers to the stack. So I'm going to be playing with RDI. I'm also going to be playing with RCX. So save, we're going to save these um, push to stack. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're basically saving these values from RDI and RCX. So that way I can use these registers. And after my function returns, it looks like my function had never messed with those registers. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, actually set RDX um, or RCX to zero. And the way that we do that is subtract RCX from itself. So set RCX to zero. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to move um, negative one into RCX. And RCX uh, in the olden days, um, RCX was called, uh, well, in 32 bit mode, it was called ECX and it was used as a counter. And it still performs that function today um, in certain role or in certain commands. And so we're going to be using RCX as a counter for our string. The other thing that we want to do is subtract. AL from itself. So we're going to set AL to zero. Actually set to zero. Um, this is something we I don't think we've seen before. Uh, but you can, I, in my last video I talked about registers. And you can, uh, RCX is a full 64 bits. But you can actually access pieces of a register. And in this case we're going to be accessing um, the lower part of the RAX register and that's and this lower part will actually be uh, 8 bits um, so we're setting the the bottom 8 bits of RAX to 0 and uh, this will actually be used as a little variable that we're going to compare things to um, then we're going to uh, clear the direction flags um, this command is used for this um, next command that we're going to be using, which is called, uh, actually, we need to repeat if not equal first. And we're going to go to SCSB. Now this is uh, kind of the secret sauce. Uh, this function scans through a string, and it compares uh, the character of the string the string it's currently on to whatever is in AL. So we've set AL to zero and if you look the very end of our string is a zero because in Linux and a few other operating systems we tell the end of our string by having a zero. So what SCSB is going to do is it's actually going to look at our string character by character and compare it with AL. And once we reach zero, this repeat 
if not equal will fail and then we will uh, will escape our loop but this is our loop it's just a one uh, one line loop uh, And afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to negate our CX uh, because what happens in SCASB is it does a comparison with AL with the string that we're on. And if it's not equal to, to the AL register, what it does is it actually subtracts one from RCX. So RCX actually uh, decrements and so what we we're gonna have a negative number at the end uh, after after this is looped through and what we want to do is negate that so negate RCX so it will now be a positive number and then we also want to uh, remember that our string um, ends with a zero so what we want to do or we actually started at negative one so we need to add one afterwards so let's, um, oh, actually, we start with a negative one. So, and, and since we negated that, we actually need to subtract one. Sorry about that. RCX, let's subtract one. And now, what we can do is, now RCX has the length of our string. And what we need to do is just move that to RAX because RAX is, uh, when you return values from a function, uh, RAX is the first register you should use to return a value from the function. So, um, Or actually, let's just say to RAX. Then, after we're done, what we need to do is uh, oh, we need to we need to restore our um, our registers. So we need to pop our CX and pop. Um, or di. Whoops. So now we've restored our registers. Maybe I should create some comments for that. Restore the original RCX value. Restore original RDI value. Then we can return. And that's how we leave our function. So now we have a function that that uh, can calculate the length of a string. And hopefully this makes sense. Basically what we do is we set RCX, which is our counter to zero, um, and then we set it to negative one. And then we have a, a variable AL register that we set to zero. We clear our direction flags. You can read more about this online of what the direction flags do. And then we're going to repeat if uh, the, we're going to repeat if not equal to AL. Um, we're going to compare our character that we're currently on to AL. And as long as it's not equal, we're gonna just going to keep uh, iterating and we're going to decrement one from RCX. After we find, after they, uh, after it is equal, then we're going to negate RCX because it's going to be this negative value. Then we're going to, uh, so then we'll have a positive value. We'll subtract one from it, move it to RAX, and then restore our registers and return. And then after we return, RAX will have the length of our string in it. So if we go back up here, what we're what we can do is. Uh, call our function and the way you call a function is just use the call command and we're going to call string length and then after we've done that RAX will automatically have the length of our string so we can just delete this line 
and everything else should be able to stay the same. So let's see, let's try this out. Let's go phasm, phasm one, it ran. We now have a phasm one on there and the function runs. And so now we have, we've written our first function and it can find the length of a string. Uh, pretty easy. So next time we're going to expand our, our program even further and create more useful functions uh, on our way to expanding and creating useful programs. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time.